Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. C, they want to know what are the conditions of the entering supply air. Well, we know that the leaving air is 72 degrees and the delta T is 16 degrees. So it's pretty easy to say what the temperature is. If the delta T is 16, and what is delta T? Delta T is return minus supply. So then the supply air is going to be return minus 16, which equals 72 minus 16. So 56 degrees is the temperature of the supply air. But they also want to know the relative humidity, and that is considerably more interesting to calculate because we assumed that the required supply volume was based on the sensible load. And now we have to figure out how dry that supply air would have to be in order to absorb the amount of water vapor that's being added to the air by the latent load that we have, such that when it leaves, it has these conditions, 72 degrees and 50% relative humidity. What's the relative humidity of the supply air, which is 56 degrees, such that it's able to do that? So the way we're going to go about this is let's first find the humidity ratio of that leaving air. So the leaving air is 72 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity. And on the psych chart or a psychrometric calculator, you can look up the humidity ratio, which I'll call omega-2, where I'll reserve omega-1 as being the supply condition. So that turns out to be 58.6 grains per pound. And if we can figure out the amount of water vapor being produced by the latent load that we have, we'll know how much lower the humidity ratio of the supply air must be. So how will we find that out? If you've watched a couple of the previous problems leading up to this, you've seen this formula used a few times now. The latent load equaling the mass flow rate of water times delta H, which can be assumed to be HFG, the latent heat of vaporization for water at some temperature and that can be looked up in the steam table app 23A. In this particular case, we're gonna take HFG at the temperature of the room air, which is 72 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's 1052.5 BTU per pound. So we know HFG at the temperature we care about, and we know the latent load. We can find the mass flow rate of water. That's the water vapor being added to the air by this latent load. So let's solve for m dot w. The latent load we calculated before, we said it was 10,446, and that's BTU per hour, divided by the latent heat of vaporization, 1052.5 BTU per pound. The BTUs cancel out, we're gonna end up with pounds per hour, and the value is 9.92. So that's pounds of water being produced every hour. And now let's work with per unit minutes since we're going to have the air volumes in CFM and let's also change to grains so we'll multiply by 7,000 grains per pound of water and we'll multiply one hour over 60 minutes so that gets rid of hours and gets rid of pounds we'll end up with grains per minute and the value is 1158 grains per minute so that's how much water vapor is being added to the air on a continuous basis and now we can use this formula that says the mass flow rate of water equals the mass flow rate of air times the delta of the humidity ratios of the two streams. So we just found the mass flow rate of water. We know one of the two humidity ratios, we're looking for the other, so this is our unknown. And the mass flow rate of air, we can use the volume flow rate of air that we have and an assumed density. So let's solve for the delta of the humidity ratios. It's gonna be m dot w over m dot air. So 1158 grains per minute. And the volume flow rate we said was the supply volume. That's this 1507 CFM. And I'll write that as cubic feet per minute so we can see the units cancel. And we need to divide that by the specific volume. Now technically we don't know the specific volume of the supply air because we only know the temperature of it. We don't know the humidity. We need to know two things to fully define that state. But we can make an assumption based on a typical specific volume 
and the number that I usually go to is 13.5 cubic feet per pound. And if it turns out that we were way off in this assumption based on what we ultimately find out about the condition of that supplier, then we should go back and iterate on this and use the real specific volume. And you may have to do it a couple times until it starts to converge. But we can be relatively confident that it's not going to be too far away from 13 and a half. So cubic feet cancels and minutes cancel. We end up with grains per pound and that answer is 4.7. So what is delta of the humidity ratio? It's the difference between the leaving humidity ratio, which I'm calling omega 2, and the entering humidity ratio, which we'd like to know. I'm calling that omega 1. So this is our unknown. This we know. Let's solve for omega 1. That's going to be the 58.6 minus this 4.7. And that gives us 53.9 grains per pound. So what are we saying? We're saying that the entering air has this humidity ratio, 53.9. Then it acquires an additional 4.7 in the space, which is resulting from the latent load. And then it ends up at 58.6 as the leaving condition. That's omega 2. So if that sounds believable, we now know two things about the entering air. We know that the temperature is 56 degrees Fahrenheit and that the humidity ratio, I'll call that T sub 1 and this omega sub 1, is 53.9 grains per pound. So using the psych chart or a psych calculator, we can figure out what the relative humidity associated with those two values is. And I'm finding out that it's about 80%. And that's answer C. And remember not to get hung up on the fact that the relative humidity is higher for the entering air because that air is much colder. So its capacity to hold water vapor is much lower. You have this 56 degree, 80% air coming in. It, it's relatively more humid, but its humidity ratio is lower. It's only 53.9. So it actually has the capacity to absorb more water vapor and get to 58.6, which because it's absorbing so much sensible heat at the same time, its temperature is much higher, going from 56 to 72, and the relative humidity at that leaving condition is only 50%, but it's actually more absolute humidity. Hopefully that makes sense.